Welcome back. In the previous video, we introduced algorithms as specific steps to accomplish a task. People have been studying algorithms for generations now, and many algorithms have already been created for a variety of common tasks. In this video, we will learn from their experience by examining two helpful approaches they've discovered for solving algorithms. Then in the next video, we'll dive into some specific algorithms. The two approaches we'll look at in this video are greedy and divide and conquer. When you come to a complex problem, each of these gives you a particular perspective to break that problem down. In other words, each provides a different angle for looking at the problem. Let's look at greedy algorithms first. Greedy algorithms propose a simple solution to a complex problem. In fact, sometimes too simple. Imagine we're writing an algorithm to find GPS directions. There are millions of different routes to get from Detroit to LA. That's a complex problem. But there's a simple solution. We know LA is west of Detroit, so just turn west at every intersection, right? That would be an example of a greedy algorithm. A greedy algorithm is any algorithm that doesn't look ahead or take complex factors into account. It just looks at the current situation and makes a choice with the most obvious and immediate benefit. Now you can probably see that our greedy west-only algorithm is unlikely to give us the fastest route to LA. In fact, it will probably run us into a dead end at some point. This particular greedy algorithm is too simple for the problem. But there are many situations where a greedy algorithm does give the right solution. Consider an algorithm to select the fewest coins to give as change. A greedy algorithm here would be to repeatedly give the coin with the largest possible value until the entire amount is given. Here's pseudocode for that algorithm. For example, start with 62 cents in change. The first time through the loop, check for the largest coin. It's a quarter. Give a quarter and subtract 25. We're left with 37 cents. The loop repeats. Again, a quarter fits. Give a quarter and reduce the total to 12. The loop repeats. This time, a quarter is too much, so drop down to the dime case. Give a dime and subtract 10. We have two cents left. Next time through the loop, only a penny fits. Now we have one cent left. The loop repeats one more time. We give a penny and our total is zero. The algorithm ends. We end up giving two quarters, one dime, and two pennies. This is the fewest possible coins. It turns out this greedy algorithm will always optimize the fewest coins to give as change. Greedy algorithms are a great go-to when trying to tackle a complex problem. It can be overwhelming to try to think through a big picture solution, but often all you need to start with is one simple repeatable rule, like the largest coin rule in our example. This will work perfectly for some problems. For others, it may be imperfect, but still good enough. And for others, like the map route example, it may require more tweaking. In any case, a greedy algorithm can be a good place to start. The other category we want to look at in this video is divide and conquer. This approach, when faced with a problem that seems too large to handle, breaks it up into smaller problems, and keeps breaking those down into yet smaller problems until we get down to bite-sized pieces we can easily handle. Let's take, for example, sorting a hand of cards. In this case, we just want to put the cards in order from ace to king, regardless of suit. Where to start? There are many ways to tackle this, but for now, we'll take the divide and conquer approach. There are eight cards here. What's easier than sorting eight cards? How about sorting four cards? Let's break this up into two sets of four. Now, how can we sort four cards? Well, if four is easier than eight, then two is easier than four. Let's break it up again. Now we just need to sort two cards at a time. I think that's something we can handle. Just swap the cards if they're not already in the right order. The key next step in this algorithm is to bring all of our smaller sorted piles back together into one hand. We can merge two piles into one by repeatedly taking the smallest card from either stack and adding it to the larger stack. Looking at the first two stacks, three is smaller than eight. Next, 
8 is smaller than king, then 10 is also smaller than king. Finally, king is the last card left. We'll repeat the process for these two stacks. And then repeat one more time to bring the larger sorted stacks back into the complete hand. A comes before 3, 3 comes before 5, 5 before 8, 6 before 8, and so on. This is actually a well-known algorithm called merge sort because it involves repeatedly merging two sorted arrays, or stacks of cards, into a larger sorted array. It is a great example of a divide and conquer algorithm. It takes a big problem and breaks it down into smaller, more manageable parts. That's it for this video. We looked at two strategies you can use for thinking about tackling tricky coding tasks, greedy and divide and conquer. In the next video, we'll dive into a couple specific algorithms that are good to be familiar with.